What is up my friends? This is going to be video number two in our series on understanding vacuum cleaners. I created this series in order to empower you to be able to go out, shop for a vacuum cleaner, know exactly what to look for so you can get the best bang for your buck, and all in all just get the best possible vacuum to suit your needs. And the next step in that is to understand the vacuum cleaner specifications. Some of you are absolutely going to love this video, while others, eh, not so much. Either way though, at the end of this video, I've got a nice demonstration for you, for you visual learners, and hopefully, I don't get electrocuted. So typically when you're shopping for a vacuum cleaner, at least online, you're going to find some different sections on the website. Number one will be a description of the product. Two will be features, which is just basically areas the manufacturer wants to highlight. Three, you're going to find reviews also listed as ratings, pretty self-explanatory, it's the I love, I hate section. And then fourth and finally, you're going to find the product specifications, which is what we're going to learn in this video and in the videos to come. And this is what's going to allow you to make an informed buying decision. There's around seven main specifications and a handful of secondary specifications. Everything put together though is what's going to determine the vacuum cleaner's cleaning ability. For this video, we're going tunnel vision. We're going to focus in specifically on the motor and the three specifications that correspond. Specifically, watts, amps, and volts. In part one of this video series, I taught you how a vacuum cleaner works. Every vacuum has a motor that activates a fan, which decreases the pressure inside the vacuum cleaner, which then causes it to suck. Air comes in one side and out the other, causing a continuous airflow. In the vacuum world, you'll often hear this motor referred to as the suction motor. The motor is the main component of the vacuum cleaner. Without it, you got nothing. So naturally, you would think the more powerful the motor, the better the vacuum, right? More power equals more suction, which creates more airflow. Simple, right? Not necessarily. Specifications for the motor are just that. They tell you how a motor performs, but that doesn't always equate to overall vacuum cleaner performance. Greatest motor in the world with cheap housing and all kinds of leakage, you get my point. So let's just jump right in. Let's talk about the motor specifications, watts, volts, and amps. So specification number one, let's talk about something simple, volts. In the United States, houses operate on 120 volts. A lot of times you hear it referred to as a 110. And that's because voltage drops as it travels from your breaker box through the wiring of your house to your plug outlets. The power company will supply 120 volts to your home, to your breaker box, but by the time it gets to the actual plug outlet, it could be 114. For practical purposes, vacuum cleaners are designed to operate between 110 volts and 120 volts. So if you find a specification on a vacuum cleaner where it says the voltage is less than 120, it's not going to work. So every vacuum that you come across should say 120 volts for the volt specification. That number should never change. Now if you live in Europe, the line voltage is 220. So you wouldn't want to use vacuum cleaners used for different markets. If you live in the United States, use vacuum cleaners designed for United States markets. And if you live in Europe, you'll want to use vacuum cleaners designed for Europe markets. Unless for some reason the vacuum has some kind of manual voltage switch. Now, two formulas you're going to need to know for this video are these right here. This is two formulas, number one and number two. Okay. Amps times volts equals watts. And here's the second formula. Watts divided by volts equals amps. These formulas right here are going to be important as we move on. Now the great thing about it is you already know, you already have the number for the V for the volt. I just told you it's 120 and that number will never change. Watts and amps. Now I'm going to go a little bit slower on this part. The watts specification refers to the motor's overall consumption of energy. General rule of thumb, the more watts the more powerful a motor, which means the more suction it has. But that's not necessarily always the case because it doesn't take into account motor efficiency, which is normally around 25 to 35%. 
meaning total energy consumed versus actual work done. You might have a 1600 watt motor, but only three or 400 of those watts are actually useful power. The watt specification doesn't take into account also how many fans, how many filters, types of filters, vacuum cleaner design. So it's not everything, but it's still a decent way to compare vacuum cleaner motors. For an apples to apples comparison, you'd want to compare the watts of vacuum cleaner one with the watts of vacuum cleaner two. The problem is, is that not all manufacturers will actually give you a watt specification. Instead, they'll give you an amps specification. But that's why I gave you those formulas, so you can convert watts to amps or amps to watts. So check it out. If I have a 1500 watt motor and I want to convert it to amps, what do I do? Remember the formula? I take watts divided by volts. So 1500 watts divided by the 120 volts equals a 12.5 amp motor. Amps are murky though. There's a little bit more work involved when it comes to trying to compare motors and amps. Now I'm not saying manufacturers are trying to trick you per se, but instead they give you half truths. But stick with me to the end of this video and this is going to make sense. The first thing you need to understand is what amps are. Amps are electrical current, so think of a water hose. The amount of water flowing through the water hose, the amount of electricity flowing or you know going through the circuit are the amps. The higher the amp number, the more electricity is flowing. The lower the amp number, the less electricity is flowing. So when you see an amp specification for a vacuum cleaner, it's referring to the total amount of electricity flowing through that vacuum cleaner when it's flipped on. Total being the key word, if you see a specification in vacuum cleaner that says 12 amps, it's referring to all of the electrical parts of the vacuum cleaner combined. Not just the motor itself. You could have a specification that says 12 amps, right? 12 amps. And the actual motor itself that we're referring to is 10 amps, okay? But the other electrical components in the vacuum cleaner, you might have another smaller motor down in the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner where the beater bar is that takes one amp. There might be a light bulb on board somewhere that takes one amp to give you that 12 amp number. But the actual motor itself is actually only 10 amps, okay? This is always the case unless it's specifically stated otherwise. So if you wanted to compare vacuum motor amps to vacuum motor amps, or if you wanted to convert the amps over to watts, you would need to subtract this amp and this amp. Subtract these other electrical components and just use this number right here for the actual motor. And that is going to give you your apples to apples comparison. So say we wanted to convert this 10 amp motor over to watts, what would we do? We take our formula, right? 10 amps times the volts, we already have that number, 120, and that would equal 1200. You'd have a 1200 watt motor to compare with another vacuum cleaner that gave you the watt specification. For my visual learners, here's a little demonstration to help you understand the volts, watts, and amps thing a little bit better. Okay, so I have two bags here, bag number one and bag number two. Each bag I have filled with 12,000 watts of electricity. And here I have two batteries. Right here is a 10 volt battery, and right here is an 120 volt battery. I want you to think of these batteries right here in terms of pounds of pressure. So 120 volts, 120 pounds of pressure, and then right here is 10 pounds of pressure. Now let's put our batteries on and you'll see the pressure that is created. Now if I poke our 120 volt system, okay, look at the amperage flowing. If I poke this one, we just have a small itty bitty leak. Look at the amperage of this one flowing compared to the amperage of this one flowing. Now allow me to collect some of this electricity right here. And as you can see, I've collected a couple of watts of electricity. So that's it my friends, amps, watts, and volts. In conclusion, remember, volts are always 120 for vacuum cleaners made in US markets. Also, 
keep the formulas that I gave you so that you can make apples to apples comparisons. Either watts to watts or amps to amps. And also remember when you need to use amps, make sure. Remember, the amp specification is for all the electrical components in the vacuum cleaner, so make sure you're getting just the motor itself. Make sure you're subtracting the other stuff. Small motors, light bulbs, all that kind of stuff to make the apples to apples comparison. So that is it, my friends. Let's call that a video. It's probably running a little bit long. Let that information soak in, and then we'll, the next video, we'll talk about even more of the main specifications. If you liked this video, though, please give it a big claim of confidence thumbs up. Really helps us out. And if you want to take our relationship to the next level, drop me a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. And until then, I will see y'all in the next video. Perceive it or not, so but you better stop believing There's power in this product to decrease and devour A 90 minute job just turn into an hour